When billing Medicare, billers and coders can use certain secondary modifiers to convey important information to Medicare, instructing Medicare to either pay or not pay a claim. The GW secondary modifier informs Medicare about the nature of a transport involving a patient who has elected the Medicare hospice benefit. A Medicare beneficiary in a terminal condition can elect this hospice benefit. Hospice services can be performed in a facility like a hospital or a skilled nursing facility or in a private residence through a visiting nurse service. When this hospice election occurs, all hospice-related services, including ambulance transports, are billed to the hospice facility or the entity that is receiving the Medicare reimbursement. This process is similar to the SNF Consolidated Billing or Prospective Payment System, PPS. Like that SNF PPS, there are exceptions. So in the ambulance context, when a patient who elects hospice requires ambulance transport for something related to the terminal illness for which the hospice was elected, that particular service is going to be billable to the hospice, not to Medicare Part B. For example, let's say a patient is living at home, has lung cancer, has a DNR, they've elected the hospice benefit. This patient has an acute episode of respiratory distress. A family member panics, calls 911. Patient gets ultimately transported to the hospital. In this case, the reason for the transport, the respiratory distress, is related to that terminal illness of that diagnosis of lung cancer. This transport will be billable to hospice. There is no need to use the GW secondary modifier in this case. Now, consider that same terminal lung cancer patient. They have elected the hospice benefit. Now the facts are a little bit different here. Let's say the patient trips and falls. Their patient is in significant pain. They're unable to get up from off the floor. 911 is again initiated by a concerned family member who fears that maybe there's a fracture. EMS responds, EMS transports the patient to an orthopedic hospital to ultimately evaluate the injury. In this case, the reason for the transport is unrelated to that terminal illness. This situation creates an exception to this hospice benefit. When the reason for the transport is unrelated to the terminal illness, Medicare Part B, and not the hospice, assumes financial responsibility. Using the GW modifier here tells Medicare that the transport was unrelated to the terminal illness. By adding the GW modifier to simply all transports of all hospice patients is not the proper course of action because it could improperly trigger Medicare Part B payment when the transport should be billed to hospice. Because Medicare already knows which of its beneficiaries has elected hospice, again, using that GW allows for Medicare payment to go through. This, of course, assumes that all other Medicare coverage criteria are satisfied. If you do not use the GW modifier, it will result in a payment denial. This would alert you to then bill the hospice or if the condition is unrelated to the terminal illness, perhaps to rebill it to Medicare with a GW. Again, assuming all Medicare coverage criteria are met. As a reminder, the GW tells Medicare it is a hospice patient, but the transport was unrelated to the terminal illness. And as a result, Medicare should be billed for the transport. Again, assuming all Medicare coverage criteria have been satisfied. Thanks for watching.